So we're just gonna stand here nice and quiet, and you are gonna get in the back of the squad car, and we'll all be happy. Well, I won't be happy. We're waiting. Tap, tap, tap. Hey! Let me ask you a question. Have you ever played a game where you fight a barbershop quartet riding jetpacks and firing at you with corny sci-fi laser guns, and actually had them be some of the toughest enemies in the game? I can say that I have, and that game was Stubbs the Zombie for the Xbox. Yep, going back to the original Xbox again, almost as if that console had a lot of forgotten gems. Released in October 2005 for the original Xbox, Stubbs the Zombie, or if you want to call it by its full title, Stubbs the Zombie in Rebel Without a Pulse, is a third-person action-adventure game developed by Wideload and published by Aspire. Stubbs the Zombie was the first game created by Wideload, who consisted of former members of Bungie, including Halo's own executive producer. Wow, that's two videos in a row I mentioned Halo. I swear I don't do this on purpose. In fact, the game actually used the fact that it was from the executive producer of Halo as a selling point, not to mention a few gameplay similarities we'll get to later. You play as a newly resurrected zombie named Stubbs, though you'd only know his full name is Edward Stubbs Stubblefield if you look at the back of the box, because his name is only ever stated once in the game, and it's in one of the last cutscenes. The year is 1959, and Stubbs, who's been dead for about 20 years, finds himself alive again in the retro-futuristic city of Punchbowl, Pennsylvania. The city is alive with advanced technologies and friendly robots, though some of them are a little friendlier than others. Coming right up. I'm not sure I have enough cash to cover. Oh, never you mind, sir. It's on the house. Oh, there's no need for that. Oh, it's my pleasure, officers. My pleasure. The city is led by local billionaire Andrew Ryan, uh, sorry, Andrew Monday, who works closely with his mother, Maggie Monday, who Stubbs seems to be immediately smitten. His goal is pretty clear, he wants to get to Maggie Monday and maybe chew on some gray matter while he's at it. Of course, not everyone is happy with a reanimated corpse running around eating people's brains, so everyone from beat cops, riot police, Trump voters, Andrew Monday's scientific research team, and even the army are out to stop the supposed zombie menace. As a zombie, Stubbs is gifted with a few unique abilities. You can turn enemies into zombies and create a zombie horde. You can tear your hand off and latch it onto enemies to possess them, which is great for armed enemies as it'll allow you to use their weapons. You can also roll your head like a bowling ball and detonate it, throw your guts and detonate them like grenades. Wasn't that your pancreas? No oh well, suit yourself and fart a huge cloud of noxious fumes, stunning surrounding enemies and allowing you to get the upper hand on them. Any enemy that you kill as Stubbs will return as a zombie, though you can also weaken them and eat their brains to regenerate some of your lost health and fill your special ability meters. And this will also turn your enemies into zombies. Having a zombie horde can be useful for when there are a lot of enemies on screen, as well as those few moments when you need a large number of them to break down a door. Also, enemies will tend to target your zombie horde instead of you, but any zombie that is killed by an enemy will stay dead and not respawn. If you think the movement speed looks a little slow, not to worry because you'll eventually start sprinting if you continue walking. Though the same doesn't ring true for enemies possessed by the zombie hand. Unless it's an enemy with a jetpack or has access to a vehicle or a turret, I don't recommend possessing one for too long as they move extremely slowly and don't regenerate health. You also get access to a few vehicles to traverse the areas faster and take out enemies quickly, and the driving controls are exactly the same as in Halo. And I do mean they control exactly like they did in Halo. You can tell someone from that game worked on this. In fact, the overall structure of the game is pretty similar to Halo as well. You're generally just going from point A to point B and fulfilling a requirement here or there to open the next area. Sometimes you have to bust down a door, sometimes you fight a boss, sometimes you clear out an area of enemies. Gameplay is pretty basic mid-2000s action game fare, with the added satisfaction of overrunning your enemies with an army of the undead. It's a fundamentally solid game for its time, and it also helps that this is easily one of the funniest games I've ever played. For example, you raid a police station and the police chief taunts you the whole time you're there. And when you reach him, you probably expect to fight him like a standard boss fight, when suddenly... I told you I would dance in your grave, and I met it! <laughs> he challenges you to a freaking dance-off. And I guess this is as good a time as any to bring up the game's soundtrack. And I don't mean a collection of background music, I mean an actual soundtrack. 
This game's soundtrack contains modern covers of popular 50s songs, and they're really well done. If you have a moment, look up Oranger's cover of Mr. Sandman, it's pretty great. For a game about a zombie uprising, the humor and dialogue are pretty on point. What other game has the main character be a zombie, riding on a sheep, escaping from a farm explosion to a dam, only for that zombie to have to take a really bad piss and have the area cap off by pissing in the city's water supply while scientists shoot at you? And characters will just say some interesting and funny things when you're not chewing on their brains. Now what does a bloody blue screen mean? It's a game that'll make you want to wait a minute before attacking to hear what all they have to say. God dang idiots! Can't you see he's a tool of the Illuminati? This is all part of their plot to set up a one-world government via the Mormon Tabernacle Choir? Penguins interbreeding with leprechauns? Maps of the Flat Earth systematically removed from public schools? Why? Do you need to ask? Who stands to benefit the most from a commie-controlled America? The dead, that's who! It all comes together. Ancient Mayans, gamma rays, dinosaur bones. Do I have to paint you a picture? Overall, Stubbs the Zombie is a pretty solid title. My nitpicks are few. It can get a bit repetitive and some objectives aren't always made clear, but overall, it's a pretty good time. It's a bit of a shame that not a whole lot of people remember this game. It had the misfortune of being released in the United States just one month before the launch of the Xbox 360, and it, expectedly, fell under a lot of people's radars because of it. It arrived too late on the original Xbox and got overshadowed by superior hardware, and also arrived just a few years too early to be a part of the country's zombie craze a while back. The game is extremely rare and only sold around 110,000 copies worldwide. The game was released on Xbox Live Arcade, but was removed shortly after because of technical issues. The game is backwards compatible with the Xbox 360, that's actually how I was able to get footage for this video, but good luck trying to find a physical copy of it under 40 or 50 bucks. Heesh. <laughs> Wideload released one more game before being acquired by Disney Interactive, where they made a party game for the Wii and a mobile game starring Marvel's Avengers, before finally being shut down in 2014 when Disney Interactive underwent corporate restructuring. So with the game's scarcity value, and the fact that it can be finished within 6 or 7 hours, can I really recommend this at what is essentially the same price as it was back in 2005, or even higher? Well, I'll say this. If you have access to an Xbox or an Xbox 360, and if the gameplay I'm showing here and have described to you looks and sounds interesting to you, and you can swallow the rather steep asking price, then I don't see the harm in it, but it is ultimately up to you if you feel comfortable shelling out this kind of money for a game that is solid, but may not blow you away like some other games from this generation might, and is also a fairly short game. It is a good game, yes, but you need to ask yourself if it's worth the price tag that you're seeing for how much game there is here. You may like it, you may be a little disappointed. Either way, I do say that Stubbs the Zombie is a game that you should approach with caution. Hey, Sweet Cheeks, back that thing up! Yeah, I'm talking to you, come on, come on back here! Don't go away, don't, don't leave, don't walk away, man! Come on, I, I'm talking to you, back. come on over here! For crying out loud, you little tease! I kinda love you and I think you're kinda cute. Hey, where are you going? 